Some of y'all wanted to argue with me in the comments. I mean, some of y'all also agreed with me, but I mean, I had a lot of people want to tell me that, you know, they were they skeptical, but you know, uh, that they had faith in Intel. I, here we go. Yeah, everything's been unlifted now. And now these are gonna be from your top reviewers here. And these people here, they know they have to make things sound good for them to get their parts and be sponsored by these companies. Check this out. Spoiler alert, Arrow Lake is an absolute mess. From the naming scheme to the performance, it's all pretty disappointing. I had high hopes for this to be a great return for Intel, but it's not. Despite Intel claiming a massive IPC uplift gen on gen, it's simply not true. This is not biased, these are facts. Prepare yourself for this. This whole launch is such a complete mess in my opinion, and I personally think it should have been postponed until everything is at least stable. So yeah, there we go. That's the 285K. I was hoping for more in games. I truly was. I didn't see personally any of the uplift in some games like Intel was talking about in their slides. I definitely saw the fact that compared to the 13 and 14900K, I saw a pretty much across the board reduction in performance. Would I recommend this CPU? That, that is a big loaded question. And let me say why. Compared to like the 12900K and whatnot, it's an upgrade. Compute wise, anything that needs CPU intensity, yes. When it comes to games, even some of the games were not, like it wasn't that much better than a 12900K. All right, so so many of y'all wanted to argue with me, right? So uh, yes, some of these, they didn't tit tat on if it was hyper threading or not. Uh, hopefully Gamer Nexus will go through some. Uh, I haven't watched their full review just yet. Uh, but Gamer Nexus, Kid Get uh, Guru, Devour, all these. You know, I can't steal everybody's videos so or you know incorporate them. I'm not really stealing. I just took some. I didn't, of course, I couldn't afford the chip this year. So, uh, which I'm kind of glad. I would have been returning this chip. Uh, this is a very, very disappointing day for me for intel i have literally been an intel fanboy every time i built me even back when fx on amd come out in 2004 uh, i think it was the fx 6300 i think uh, i think that's what it was but anyways uh i've never never liked it uh back then i ran the intel extreme edition pentium 4s if you're using this chip for gaming you're sol 100 percent this is, I mean, again, Linus, Jay, all these people have literally been doing their tests for days. And you know what? I watched a thing for Paul's hardware. I, I feel sorry. Sorry, Paul, that you're about your dog. Uh, sorry about, you know, they're like family members, man. I, I do apologize. But you know what? He probably wasn't hyped because he already knew that this was a flop. One hundred percent. I just, uh, man, if this gets to you, Paul, leave a comment down below. Let me know. This is such a huge disappointment, Intel. For AMD to literally mop you up in gaming. Obviously, there's not all bad about the chip. This chip is a power horse when it comes to video editing or whatever. So if that's all you do is productivity, then this chip's for you 100%. I mean, from what I've seen, what I've read, but if you want any type of gaming, so like me, Call of Duty comes out tomorrow and I run a 4090 to play my Call of Duty and play my games. And this right here would have this, this would have made me so mad to rebuild a system and to lose performance. Again, if I would have already ordered this, then, I would have, uh, I, I'd be sending it back. I'd be super mad because I'd be sending back motherboard. I'd be sending back processor and of course, Ram. That is where my biggest disappointment is, is with the Ram. I had such high hopes because of the Ram being able to be pushed to its limits. You know, that this, that, I don't know that Intel has really let me down on this one, man, for 24 years, I've been building computers and, like I said, and in the comments, you know, I've been doing this for so long. The minute they came up with hyper threading and as soon as they started it, you know, it, it literally, it shook AMD and then AMD could never catch up because of the beginning stages of hyper threading. 
And Intel just started pushing and pushing and pushing their performance, man. So again, they pushed their performance one way, but then lost the other way, which is what a lot of people really look at is gaming on this chip. Don't get me wrong. You can still game on it. It's not that big of a thing. So if you're not worried about getting 240 frames uh, at you know 1080 or 14.4 or 4K, you're just running at 145 frames and you know you want everything at max setting at 144, then get the chip. I mean, 100%, get the chip. As far as testing, I didn't hear Jay or anyone else talk about if they had Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, Windows 11 23H2, 24H2, what version of Windows they were running. You know, there was still, it was this fresh, clean install. We didn't get none of that. So I, some of that's going to take, take a, a factor in some of this. At the same time, you know, a lot of them said, you know, possibly a Windows update to uh, utilize certain things, possibly. To, to give it a little uplift. Windows didn't, or Intel didn't have a Windows update whenever they did their testing and gave out their numbers, right? They gave these numbers out months ago on w between Windows 10 and Windows 11. Saying all this, I, I want to say I told you so. I had high hopes for Intel, but at the same time, I, I told you so. I, I already knew that from some of the stuff and them taking out hyper-threading, I already knew that we were going to have a huge, huge performance hit. Um, maybe the 295K when it comes out? Maybe. Maybe that one's going to be a little different. This is a big stepping stone, though, for Intel for the next gen. So whether it's next year or not, um, if they can perfect some of their performance or incorporate hyper-threading back into this chip, being that the productivity multi-performance that it does have in Blender, in some of these, that it is incredibly fast. Now, let's make it overall fast for everybody, not just one or the other. Not just gaming, not just productivity, you know. We need a chip that's going to do everything. I mean, you... We can get it. If this was a powerhouse of a chip and we were only losing like one or two frames to AMD or something, I can kind of understand. But losing the way that it is, I just, I'm very disappointed and we can't have this. I'm Thomas with Tomology. If you like uh, product reviews and, and, and certain tech talks and to go through certain things, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be bringing a lot more. I will be growing this channel. I'll get more comfortable talking to the camera. I'll get more comfortable doing certain things, doing certain reviews. Uh, but again, I got some products coming in to do some reviews. Go ahead and again, smash that like button. I'm Thomas Tomology. I'll catch you in the next one.